Hi everyone, thank you for joining us tonight. We're gonna to be talking about Tulane School of Professional Advancement and our Humanities and Social Sciences programs. I'm joined tonight by Dr. Dalila Omerbasic. We'll give a little bit more formal introduction here in a second, but I wanted to run through our agenda before we really dove in. So for those of you who've joined us before, you're probably gonna recognize some of this content, but uh, we're gonna talk about who we are, so that's a little bit about the history of Tulane SOPA and then what we offer. So that's gonna be specifically the Humanities and Social Sciences programs programs, the ways that we support student success, how to actually apply, and then that tuition and financial aid. If you have any questions along the way, we'll make sure to get back to them at that Q&A section at the very end, but definitely use the Q&A function or the chat function so that we can be sure we cover all those topics that we can really appreciate the team. So for those of you that I haven't met before, my name is Chris Lloyd. I'm an admissions associate here at Tulane SOPA. So I work really closely with our prospective students. So whether you're still evaluating or you've actually applied, as well as students who once they've been admitted, I help with that handoff to either getting you to your program director, your advisor, whoever that appropriate next step is. Dr. Omer Bosich, could you give a brief overview of your background and introduce yourself to our viewers? Hey everybody, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Dalila Ahmed Basic. I am a professor of practice at SOPA, um, also a program director for humanities, humanities and social sciences. Um, and um, I also serve as the coordinator for um, prior learning assessment. Um, I teach classes uh, primarily in the MLA program. Um, and I look forward to um, answering any of the program related questions that you may have um, after the webinar. Thank you so much. So uh, to give a little bit of history, Tulane was initially founded in 1834 as the Medical College of Louisiana. And since then, we've had many major changes, one of which was in 1886, you had the first continuing education classes offered for our adult learners here. So if you're looking at it from the perspective of Tulane SOPA being born in 1886, that's over 130 years of a commitment to adult learners. So I like to tell people that if we were our own independent university, that we would be one of the older institutions here in the Southeast that has a direct focus on adult learners and continuing education. So I think we've got a really tremendous legacy here and I hope you guys are really gonna be proud and excited about what we've built here. So um, to give a little bit of perspective about what we offer, how our programs are set up, uh, I think it's important we talk about the delivery models. So you've got online and on campus as well as a blend of online and on campus. And with the on-campus classes, you're looking at day and nighttime classes. So whether that's, you know, a typical class like meeting on a Wednesday from say 6 to 8.50 p.m. or maybe a Saturday class, there's a lot of different ways for you to engage with your coursework. And I think that's beneficial for people who are maybe returning to school, have multiple obligations. So if you're someone where maybe you have a full-time job and a family, that combination of online and on-campus or online specific programming might be more beneficial to you and fit in with your schedule a little bit better. Um, with the online delivery models, you've got either asynchronous or synchronous content delivery. So with the asynchronous, you can watch the coursework on your own time, as long as you're meeting and fulfilling those deadlines for the classes. And with the synchronous, you actually get that classroom experience. So if you are a distance learner and you know, you're tuning in from somewhere else in the US or in the world, then that's where you'd still be able to have that classroom experience and have an interaction with your professor and with the other students. So I think it can be really beneficial to have that kind of multimodal delivery. Dalila, could I hand over uh, to you for talking a little bit more in depth about the humanities and social sciences program? Sure. Um, thanks for providing a, a, just a kind of a broad overview of um, the school and, and our programs. Um, but I will specifically talk about the um, humanities and social sciences programs that we offer, um, which all have in common um, the fact that they're all very interdisciplinary. Um, and um, students in, in all of our programs, both graduate and undergraduate, um, are studying um, the various social relationships, practices, and structures um, from various um, uh, perspectives and disciplines. Um, and through this process, um, you're strengthening your critical thinking skills as well as your communication skills and your writing. Um, so those are sort of the kind of the core um, elements of all the programs. Um, in our graduate uh, program, which is the Master of Liberal Arts, um, students are engaging with various, um, various perspectives um, um, in order to, to um, just basically create their own uh, plan of study to pursue, um, to pursue an interest um, 
or, or um, either intellectual interest or an academic interest that they're um, uh, focusing on. Um, and the program has a requirement of um, 10 courses, um, which now includes a capstone project. Um, the capstone project um, will be a course um, at, that you would take at the end of your, um, at the end of your master's degree. Um, and you can either um, go in depth um, to explore a particular area of interest, or you can create a portfolio through which you will combine different, um, different experiences that you've had in the program, possibly different um, courses or different areas of study um, in order to reflect on how, um, <clears throat> how this process has um, enabled, you, enabled you to either um, think differently or how it's prepared you professionally. Um, so those are basically the two different options that you would have a, 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 as sort of a culminating experience for the program. Um, the courses in the Master of Liberal Arts um, range from history, literature, philosophy, um, political science, and sociology. Um, but as a student, you would also have access to all of the courses that are offered at the graduate level um, in the School of Liberal Arts as well um, at Tulane. Our undergraduate degrees, um, we have a bachelor's in humanities and a bachelor's in social sciences. Um, our humanities students are engaging in an interdisciplinary exploration of complementary fields. Uh, for example, English literature, religious studies, linguistics, um, music, visual performing arts, or philosophy. Um, the students in the social sciences are um, focusing more on the cultural, um, economic, political, um, historical context of societies, um, and the courses are available in anthropology, geography, uh, Latin American studies, sociology, um, political science, and other related fields. And the requirements for these two degrees include 120 credits, um, including 30 credits in each major. Um, we've also just added a, requ a capstone requirement for our undergraduate students as well. Um, so at the end of your, um, at the end of your, your major, um, you will be completing a capstone um, that sort of in integrates all of the things that you've learned and also um, applies those skills to um, uh, practical case studies that, that you may be facing um, in the real world. Um, and um, relating to that, uh, because you're, you're um, building such a breadth of um, various skills um, that are directly applicable to a wide range of careers, um, the graduates from these programs um, are finding uh, opportunities in a really broad range of um, fields, so including business, education, um, the arts, um, consulting, nonprofit organizations, um, public service or public relations, um, as well as um, writing opportunities in, in various, um, in various uh, organizations. So now um, Chris is going to talk a little bit more about um, our student support um, and success services. Thank you, Dr. Omer Basic. Uh, so for those of you who are a little familiar with Tulane SOPA, you might be familiar with uh, the model that we have set up here, which is a lot of our coursework involves um, faculty that are drawn from the industry or from the related fields. So we have a large adjunct faculty network that really gives you a wide band of experience. And I think in the interdisciplinary fields like humanities and social sciences, that's where you really see a benefit because you have a really broad perspective to draw from, but you also have access to a lot of industries. So I think that's something that can be really powerful for your student experience here. And something else that I think is really powerful is the academic support that we have here. Part of that is our academic advisors. Um, for me personally, the academic advisors that we have here are really accessible and outstanding. They give um, students access in a lot of different ways, one of which is this Zoom platform we're on. Um, others are telephone email contact, in-person meetings at Uptown or Elmwood. And from what I've seen, our academic advisors go above and beyond and are really uh, working to make sure that the students have that personalized experience where they're able to really get something that feels directed and meaningful and isn't just the blanket advice towards any student. And I think that's a really unique trait of SOPA. Um, some of the other ways that we really help to support your success go beyond just in the classroom and your term here. And that involves our career services. So our career services here are run by Ms. Cynthia Washington who is specific to SOPA. So you're not uh, dealing with 
a larger network of students who are all trying to get access to her, you're dealing with just SOPA students, and Cynthia is really able to build upon the networks that she has here within SOPA and within Tulane to really give you access to a wide range of internships, job opportunities, as well as some of that career direction where she's helping you learn how to interview, how to use LinkedIn and really leverage that in order to uh, demonstrate those proficiencies you have and build a broader network. And then um, she's also helping with those very tangible elements like connecting you with potential employers. So I think that's uh, something where there's a lot of value that you can get there while you're a student and then as you're preparing to leave and beyond because you're getting an access to a really wide network of our program peers and all these Tulane alumni. So whether it's just those Tulane alumni that are the people who you know, are trying to support other Tulaneans or whether it's the people who are in the New Orleans, uh, South Louisiana, the United States region where they know and understand the quality and work of Tulane University, I think it's really helpful. You, know, you have a really strong brand here that is going to be able to uh, translate no matter where you're going in the United States. And to be able to get access to a program and school of this prestige uh, at this level, um, where you have that multimodal learning, where you have access to all of these faculty, I think that's really unique. And I can't undersell that SOPA is kind of, um, kind of a distinct school in our setup and in terms of our offerings. Um, one of the things that we'll touch on here a little bit later is on the credits for prior learning. Um, since we have Dr. Omer Basich here, I'll turn that part over to her when we get to it because she's gonna be the content expert. But with the credits for prior learning, it's a really great opportunity to get recognized for that learning that you've done already. Um, to move into the actual application process, um, you start at sopa.tulane.edu. So for those of you watching, it's that address in the bottom right corner. And you go to that green apply button and you can start your application there. Uh, as a thank you for joining us today, we're gonna waive that application fee you have. So as long as you're signing up with the same email address that you used for this webinar, or as long as you're contacting me, we'll make sure we get that application fee waiver applied for you. And then the only other pieces that you'll need are a clear photo of a government issued ID, and it needs to be unexpired. That's a really important piece. And then transcripts. So if you're applying for a bachelor's and you don't have any credits so far, that's where it's that proof of high school completion. If you have credits you're transferring, we need to see all of those transcripts from the schools that you've attended in order to make sure we're able to honor those credits. And if you're a graduate student, then that's where you will need to see that successful completion of the degree, as well as those credits that you've earned on that transcript. And for the graduate program and MLA, you're also gonna be doing a personal statement that's gonna be a strong writing sample for you. The personal statement is really important because this is our way to get that context about who you are, where you're at in terms of college readiness, and if your writing is on the level to be able to take on the demands of an MLA program, where that reading, writing, research synthesis is gonna be a big part of your workflow. So it's gonna be really important that you're demonstrating your proficiency in that personal statement. If you wanna join us for our spring cohort, you've still got time. The January 1st deadline would be for a complete application. So that's where we have all of your at least unofficial transcripts. We have that, if it's graduate, we have that personal statement. We have all those things that are gonna be needed in order to make the determination. And then you're looking at a class start only a couple of weeks after that. I don't recommend waiting till the last minute to apply because registration is open right now. So if you wanna have the best selection of courses available, start the application process as soon as possible. That way you can get an admissions decision quicker and actually start planning your coursework, meeting with your advisor, doing all those really important pieces. For summer, you've got a May 15th deadline, and then for fall, you're looking at August 15th. If you're finishing out a semester or maybe you're a high school senior or something like that, then that summer deadline is probably gonna be better and it'll give you a little bit of a longer runway to plan out your classes, make sure you get um, course registration in that first opening rather than getting what's left once you get in. Um, and then to actually uh, look at your cost of tuition, you're gonna be looking at, for the undergraduate rate, 474 a credit hour. And then at the graduate rate, you're looking at 1,039 credit hour. And with that, you do have access to any of the financial aid that would be standard at any other university. So whether that's you using uh, FAFSA to apply for federal loans, federal grants, or whether that's taking advantage of some more tuition discounts opportunities, 
there's going to be ways that can either help to reduce that cost burden or bring down that total cost of tuition. So our active duty military, veterans, teachers, and first responders all qualify for a tuition discount. And if you are a military veteran, you may also qualify for the Yellow Ribbon Scholarship, which when you combine it with your GI Bill and educational benefits, you're looking at basically zero out-of-pocket cost. There's not many opportunities out there to get as prestigious of a degree with zero out-of-pocket cost as that Yellow Ribbon Scholarship. It's a really powerful program, and we have over 30 of those scholarships available. And as far as I know, there are still scholarships that are left unclaimed, so you have an opportunity there to really be able to get the service that you've given recognized and be able to benefit your career and educational goals through that. Dalila, could I turn over the credits for prior learning to you since you are a content expert? Sure. Um, so as um, Chris mentioned, there's, there are different um, opportunities for you to earn credit um, for your previous experiences. Um, you can earn credit uh, for both bachelor's and master's degrees, um, and it can be awarded for um, military experience, um, as well as um, work experience, community service, um, or even um, you know, personal interests that you've explored on your own. Um, so we have different options um, for earning credit uh, for prior learning. Um, these include portfolio assessment, which is a program that we have um, in uh, partnership with um, the Council for Adult and Experiential Learning, which is a, a nonprofit organization. Um, uh, that facilitates this process and um, basically students, undergraduate students can earn um, up to 24 credits um, through this process um, and portfolios are basically um, uh, written narratives that are aligned uh, with the course objectives for um, different classes in which you might have uh, previous experience. So for example, um, you know, courses in digital design, if you have um, experience in um, graphic design or illustration, um, you may be able to um, create a portfolio that demonstrates how, um, how you've um, accomplished um, these course objectives through your personal experiences. Um, similarly, you can earn credits um, in our other applied programs, such as uh, information technology, um, legal studies, um, health and wellness, um, homeland security, um, so there are um, different, different opportunities um, for you to earn, um, earn credits um, in different areas. Um, you can also earn uh, credits through examination. So for example, um, CLEP exams, um, DSST exams, as well as language proficiency um, testing is available. Um, so these are basically all standardized tests um, through which you demonstrate proficiency in particular subject areas. Um, generally, they're more um, introductory level courses like Introduction to American History or American Government, those types of um, classes. And then finally, you can also um, receive credits for military training. So um, if you have a military transcript, then um, our admissions team and our advisors will work with you to transfer those credits in. Um, and as I mentioned, undergraduate students can receive up to 24 credits and um, graduate students can receive up to six credits through portfolio assessment. Thank you, Dr. Amr Basic. Uh, I think to kind of put a real number to this for you guys, 24 credits is a fifth of your total time in school. That's huge for a bachelor's. So that opportunity to be able to leverage your professional and military experience in order to move quicker is gonna be a huge cost savings too. I think that's the piece that I really wanna make sure you guys are understanding, which is the portfolio assessments can be a better value for you than those 24 credits if you have that experience and that proficiency and mastery of that subject area. So this is a really great way when you apply it with these tuition discounts, with um, Yellow Ribbon, with any of these other pieces that allow you to leverage your experience and reduce out-of-pocket cost and get to your degree quicker. I think that's really powerful for students. So for those of you who maybe are wondering how you can actually get into this process. Dalila is, or Dr. Omar Basaj is gonna be your primary point of contact once you actually are admitted, and she'll start working on that process with you. Otherwise, uh, make sure when you're doing your application, when you're uh, filling out any of those responses within it, 
that you're letting us know about these details too. That way we can help to direct you towards the appropriate resources once your admission's actually confirmed. At the beginning of the session, I mentioned that uh, we were gonna have a Q&A here at the very end and we've arrived. So for those of you who've been sitting on any questions, I just wanna make sure I give you an opportunity and a forum to raise them. Uh, while we're waiting for any of those questions to come through, I just want to kind of recap what we've talked about so far. So for the humanities and social sciences programs, you're looking at bachelor's level programs of study that are 120 credits. And then with graduate programs, you're looking at an MLA. And with the MLA, uh, Dr. Omar Basic, correct me if I'm wrong, that is that 30 credits total? Yes. So you're looking at 30 credits total where you're doing interdisciplinary work, and you're really getting an opportunity to hone your reading, writing, and research skills. And that's gonna be huge if you're staying in those fields where your writing skills are going to be one of those key tools that you're using regularly. Uh, and as someone who comes from a um, history and social sciences background, I lean on my writing and research skills a lot more than I expected to going into college. You know, it really translates to no matter what professional field you go out into. So whether you're looking at being in something where your writing is that main demonstration and the main part of your work, like related to journalism or your own personal writing, or whether it's something where you're actually working in an administrative capacity, in a public service capacity, where policy memos, where the ability to tr effectively translate your thoughts and plans into actionable items is gonna be huge. So I really can't stress enough that you know, no matter what you're looking at, whether you're at the bachelor's level or you're looking at the graduate level, honing those reading, writing, research skills are going to be essential. It looks like we don't have any questions so far. So I just wanted to reiterate, if you wanna start your application today at no cost, you can uh, go ahead and go to sopa.tulane.edu. And then once you're actually in, have the application started, the system should automatically detect that you attended this webinar once we upload the results, and then you'll be able to start with no cost to you. Looks like we have a couple of questions that just came in. So Emmanuel was asking, for the sake of planning with other duties, how soon does the, the class schedule come out before a semester? Um, so Dr. Omar Bossett, do you know the rough timeline of when we usually see the class schedules? It's usually about two months before. Um, so I think they just came out a couple of weeks ago. Um, for for the spring semester. Yeah, from my experience, it, it's usually a few weeks before the registration ticket actually opens, mm -hmm. right? So that students can do a little bit of planning. Mm -hmm. And then um, w if you're looking at like the spring session, you can use classschedule.tulane.edu to start looking at what classes are available, what's filled up. And that might also be instructive for you for whether or not you're looking at a later semester because if you're not able to get into those courses that you really need for the spring semester, that's where summer or fall might be a better fit, then you have more opportunity to really be able to work on uh, plotting out your schedule and ensuring that you're able to get into the courses you need. Alfred was asking, if I already have a Bachelor of Arts degree, can I still pursue another bachelor's degree or do I need to apply for the MLA program? So you can absolutely uh, pursue another bachelor's degree the transferability or applicability of any credits earned under that Bachelor of Arts degree is going to be dependent. You're obviously gonna to need to connect with any sort of advisor or program director to understand uh, exactly how they could be used and if they can be used. So for your specific circumstance, Alfred, I would recommend uh, reaching out to me and starting that conversation and we can figure out what's the circumstance that you're in and what's gonna be that best next step for you. All right, are there any other questions before we go ahead and close out? All right, looks like we've answered everything so far. So for those of you that have questions that come up after this session, we're gonna be distributing this uh, webinar out to you via YouTube links. So you'll get an email with an update about this. So you can either watch again, or if maybe you join late, you can catch that beginning of it. And then if you have questions, definitely follow up with me. If you're in the New Orleans area, come and do a campus tour. We'd love to see you at our Uptown or Elmwood campuses, show you what we've built here. The Uptown campus is gorgeous, especially with the weather like it is right now. It's wonderful to get to see what's been built here and the really amazing student culture we have. Uh, if you're in the area, we've got a football home football game this Saturday where you can come out and join us and see a little bit of that Tulane spirit. And 
for those of you that are maybe uh, somewhere else in the United States or a little further out, start that phone or email conversation with us. You can reach me at CLLOYD3 at Tulane.edu, or you can give me a call at 504-865-5333, and I can connect you with Dr. Omer Bosic, with any of our other resources that we have here. So just make sure to start that conversation early. That way you have time to make sure that all of the different topics and different nuances to your situation are covered and that we're setting up a really tailored plan for your enrollment. Uh, just to close everything out, I wanna make sure to thank Dr. Omer Bosic for her time. Thank you so much for giving us that content expertise. And did you have any final thoughts that you wanna share with our viewers? I just wanted to say thanks everybody for joining us and uh, taking the time um, this evening. And thanks Chris for um, leading the session. We really appreciate you guys giving up a little bit of your evening for us. There's no question too big or too small for us. So make sure to reach out. Thank you guys.